Sally must be Kristen's ex-husband. Well, that's Kristen's daughter, and this is a totally ex-husband thing to do. Well, you would know because that's a totally ex-wife for Mark. One Fine Day 1996 is a uh, romantic comedy drama set in New York. Sometimes you can skip over plot contrivances, such as uh, sharing a taxi because of... Wait, 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 wait! Hang on, you forgot your fish! And the kids leave daycare because of... Maggie, about LSD that he got from his brother. Don't move. Stay right where you are. You will both be picked up in 10 minutes. If for what you are watching on the screen is engaging. And there's oogles of chemistry between Michelle Pfeiffer's Melody Parker and George Clooney's Jack Taylor. Huh? Love you guys like a little boy or grown old man. She knew back then that you were gay? Not gay. To bridge these contrivances to the point you want them to get together. Hell, you need it. The happy endings of the 1950s romantic comedies, which this movie is, takes its inspiration from, kind of demands it. And the ending delivers with a wonderful 90s ending. However, to arrive at this happy ending, the duo, as in Melanie Parker, who is juggling motherhood with a career as an architect, and Jack Taylor, a newspaper columnist, meet and take a instant dislike to each other. Well, that's Kristen's daughter, and this is a totally ex-husband thing to do. Well, you would know because that's a totally ex-wife for Mark. And they share a taxi. I just want to know if you're wearing panties. <laughs> what color are they? Huh? That takes them and their children. Sammy is Melanie's. My mom hates your dad. And Maggie's is Jack's. So, my dad hates your mom. To a school trip which they miss. Their first meeting doesn't go well. I really don't need your help, but if I did, you would be the very last person I would turn to. And they head off in different directions. But soon, fate, if you're a romantic, or a plot device, if that floats your boat, keeps them involved. When they discover they have each other's phones. Hello? It's Jack Taylor. How did you get this number? That's my phone you're holding. This is so typical of you. What do we say we bypass the hostilities and just do messages? Bye. Each have a hectic day ahead. Melanie needs to meet an important client. However, after her son Sammy causes havoc at her office. Sammy! Oh. And Jack trailing his daughter around with him all morning. They both head to daycare and, coincidentally, come across each other. For the second time. I got I don't have a costume, darling. Oh. Hey. Having secured their children in daycare, which both of them helped to make costumes for superhero day, they swap phones during some wonderful bickering. Man, what are you talking about? You're blaming your Peter Pan complex what on your Peter mother. Pan the one complex. you're so proud of. Friends. I don't have time for friends. That's because of your Captain Hook complex and then head out to their respective day. She takes her model to a shop to get it quickly repaired. And while heading to a meeting, she receives a call from Sammy and panics. And she phones Jack in desperation and asks him to pick up the children. Jack, it's Melanie Parker. Hey. Uh, we have a major problem with our kids. They're okay, but they can't stay there. They have to be picked up right now. Oh. He flirts and teases Melanie. I'll agree if you say, Jack, please be my knight in shining armor. Jack, don't be a shithead. Go rescue our kids. But eventually he agrees on condition that she takes over the care at 3.15 while he chases down a new source. You know, you're not the only one with a day. I got a day too. Sorry. I'll meet you and the kids in my office lobby at Rockefeller Center at 3.15. Fine. Fine. In Jack's care, Sammy has to visit the doctor to have a marble removed from his nose. Doctor, he's gonna have this, this clamp thing that's gonna come up and just yank it right out. And you are gonna be fine. While in Melanie's care, Maggie goes missing from a store. And she breaks down in despair at the police station. Him. I called him immature and uncharming and irresponsible and I was my I usual self. Files a missing child report and then heads out to find Jack at the memorial press conference. However, Jack is soon reunited with his daughter and he makes it to the press conference just in the nick of time 
to confront the mayor with his scoop about corruption. Throughout the day, the duo's initial antagonism has slowly melted away. I think I, I could have feelings for him too. She's luminous. And they work together to get the children to a soccer game. Pizza class fish. Ah, why does that not surprise me? Sorry, Sammy. Low his way. But not before Melanie attends drinks with the clients that she presented ideas to earlier in the day. But upon seeing her son, she realizes that she cares more about him than her job and leaves, even though she fully expects to be fired. After the game, they both go their separate ways. And that evening, Jack finds a reason to visit Melanie. He and Maggie buy goldfish to replace the ones that were eaten earlier in the day by a cat. And while the children watch the Wizard of Oz, they share their first kiss. And in my favourite scenes in the movie. Let me um, go in and freshen up so I feel a little more like a woman and not a dead mommy. Melanie goes to the bathroom to freshen up. Accompanied by the 1963 song One Fine Day by the Chiffons. When she returns, an exhausted Jack is asleep on the sofa. She joins him. And their children find them asleep. I love this movie. It's not particularly original. 1950s Hollywood could churn these out without much fuss. But I don't care. It's a movie that can be enjoyed curled up with a hot drink or sharing a glass of wine with your friends as a good romantic comedy should be. If you like the content, please subscribe. Hit the like button and notification bell for new content. And then I am scared of getting close to anyone again. I'm just as scared as you.